<laughs> Welcome back to What You Take, guys, the show where we talk about just about anything we can possibly think of and bring you guys along for our unfiltered nice. and unapologetic ride. As always, you're going to have myself here, Steve, my brother, Chris. Hey, have you been sharing the show? I've been checking. You get creepier every yeah. fucking time we do this. It's like a disappointed, like, fatherly look. Like, we got sexy Spence. Hi, guys. I often get that look from Chris, too. I thought, you were gonna say, I thought you were going to say from your father. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, oh, that's cute. I don't see my father. Joining us back. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, kidding. actually, he doesn't talk to me. Yeah, it's... Joining us back for another episode, we've got Eric Wilford Watson from Sound and Fury. Good to be here, I think. The, <laughs> yeah. the episode's still young. He has no fucking idea what he's about to get into. <laughs> All right, now you guys can go back talking about Stephen King. Have at it. Oh, no, we're done. That's it. Yeah, I didn't want to really talk about him oh, okay. anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It's like what you guys did with the fucking Star Wars episode. I don't even know who that guy yeah. is, like was. You have a few novels here or there. Like... Spence, you know, I love you, man. Sometimes I want to punch you. It's like you. that butt moment. Like, <laughs> but <laughs> this is that moment from fucking Avengers. Like, sometimes I just want to punch you in your perfect fucking mouth. I get that actually a lot from people. Weirdly enough, I, I'm I, not really sure why. I believe it's just that. A, it's a weird little character quirk. Well, I, I do. I do. <laughs> I do want to mention. Did you just talk- say quirk? It's a character quirk. 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 It's quirk. Quirk. Well, quirk. As in something quirky, not quark as in a bartender in space. Quirk. Yeah, you said quark. Quirk. Yeah. Quirk with an I. No, yeah, I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's quark. That's just one of his quarks. It's my <laughs> <laughs> character quark. Nope. Still out. That's just how I pronounce it. Deal with it. We, uh, listen, hey, we, listen, it's okay for us. Just because I'm wrong doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing it that way. <laughs> Learn to eat a kiwi, then you can talk, Chris. All right. All right. No, I want to mention, you, you mentioned Brandon Sanderson a minute ago. I'm totally jealous of this guy's life because what he does when he writes, well, his, his daily schedule is amazing. The guy sleeps until like noon, and then he wakes up, he writes for three or four hours until dinner time. And then he spends a couple hours with his family till they all go to bed. Then he watches movies and plays video games until like eight o'clock in the morning, and then goes to sleep. And he's like a multi gazillionaire. He works. So he, like he, he works like schedule. four hours a day and writes twelve hundred page books every five minutes. I don't know how he does it. Faustian bargain has to be. <laughs> and here we are making fun of Chris eating a kiwi. Man, isn't this great? <sighs> So I've got some interesting things um, that I want to talk about because we've got, like I told you, I've got updates. And all of us like our superheroes. I know you're bigger on the DC side of things, typically. I like Marvel, but DC's my heart. That's where D- my heart DC's is. DC's got your heart. Um, we've got a fair amount of projects that are that are coming up in the works. So we're going to go to the Black Book of, of random shit. Um, random shit now? I oh, thought it was just. Random shit. I thought it was your shit. No, no. Are you it's... just collecting other people's shit? Oh, yeah. All the time, buddy. Jesus. All the time. First one's for a little bit of nostalgia. So you guys remember the cartoon, um, the X-Men cartoon back in 97? Mm. Okay. They are getting a, um, as of March 20th, 2024, they are getting a 10-episode limited series in that style again. That's what I heard, too. To X-Men 97, and apparently it's going to pick up right from where the original 97 series had left off. Oh, wait. That I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. At least that's that's the that's so, the feeling that I got out of it. Is this what it would look like if Josh Whedon brought back Firefly? It's like, hey, we're just going to pick up at we're, the end of the last season. season two. Yeah. Like, <laughs> We've been waiting for it forever. It's fine. But so like in the the trailer for it, it was the it's the original art style. They didn't try to modernize it. They didn't try and like redo the outfits, the costumes, nothing like that. This is the exact bit. I mean, Rogue's got the big swoosh of the white hair. Cyclops has the really abnormal looking visor. It's all the yellows. I mean, it's it's all the original style. Spence, you look disappointed in this news. No, no, no. I'm just thinking, like, God, they is better this, not fuck it up. Is this update not good enough for you? Oh, no, you're, no. you're thinking they should they should have just let it die where it was? No, no. The, I'm not. I'm glad they're bringing it back, but if they fuck it up, I'm gonna be pissed. Like, I grew up on that. Well, it's shit. like when they brought back He Man and then killed He Man and turned it into a total shit show. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, that's that's fair. That's like. Don't bring back old stuff unless you're going to do it right. Well, it's interesting about that because obviously it's X Men is Marvel, so it's Disney. Yeah. Um, Bob Iger actually went on in an interview and he was like, I, I th- roughly paraphrasing here, people, don't kill me in the comments. He flat out admitted that he thinks Disney makes too many sequels. 
he was like, we push out too many of them. And then follows it up with, but we're going to, it doesn't mean we're going to stop doing it. Well, yeah, so you're going to. He knows he's going to make stupid money. You know who said the same thing? Todd Howard. Elaborate. What, when people are like, why are you re- re-releasing Skyrim again? Oh. And he's like, guess what? You're still buying it. Yeah. So you can now play Skyrim on your Alexa, your Nintendo Switch. There's a Legendary Edition. There's a fucking 10-year Anniversary Edition. I'm waiting for the Lego one. Yeah. <laughs> Todd Howard is just going to keep re-releasing Skyrim until people stop buying it. I'm actually it. surprised there isn't a Lego one. To tell you Skyrim the truth, came like... out in 2012, out dude. <laughs> yeah, it's actually still yeah. one of the most like. Remember, it's games. still it is still one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, it's, it, it can't really get old. That's the thing. Yeah, it's that, a good idea. That game is almost thirteen years old, and it's still getting bought for like forty, fifty bucks. I have only ever tried Skyrim once, and it's when I first had the PlayStation VR, and I just about threw up in my living room. Trying to like navigate, running with it, and then the dragon popping in front of like me. Motion sickness. Yeah, oh, I used horrible. to play Skyrim a lot, and then I took an arrow to the knee. Nice. <laughs> uh, it's humbled many an adventurer. But yeah, no. Back to it though. Like the X Men '97. It's just one of those where I'm a little curious though, like how they're gonna go about it because it was all like over 20 years ago, almost right. 30. It's like. Hollywood's track record of bringing back old properties and doing it well isn't That's what high. I'm nervous about. That's <laughs> it isn't, isn't high. They're, they don't have a high success rate. Yeah. Like, I'm right there uh, with you, man. Man, it's like, I'm excited. I really am if they do it right. And I don't know if they're going to. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Any other thoughts and feelings on X-Men 97 before I go to the next fun bullet point? How long before they do TMNT? Ooh, that I think we're gonna be waiting for a minute. You, you so? just got you just got the animated one. Well, I know they got a bunch of like, but that's the new age stuff. I'm wondering if they're gonna do like an old school like '90s one. Oh, like in that style. probably the not. live action one. Listen, when you no said new age, I'm thinking like live action. Dude, those were the best. Those were the best. When you said new age instead of new style, I'm like new age. Like, are they the teenage Tai Chi Ninja Turtles? <laughs> <laughs> a wise man never pays full price for a pizza, a late pizza. <laughs> I don't think we will see anything out of TMNT anytime soon. The the live action ones that they had did where they looked like baby hulks yeah. was weird. Oh yeah. The I newest... loved it as a child. Oh, I loved it. And, and like the soundtrack is fire. Yeah. But I mean that's about it. You guys remember when the Ninja Turtles went back in time? No. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yes, I do remember this. Dude, I'm fuck around with Ninja Turtles. I love okay, this show. I do remember Imperial this. Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they all thought they were like. Owning I also love how everybody was like. At one point, everyone's like freaking out about it. Then it somehow everyone's just like, okay. Like yeah. there's a guy fighting, and he's like, oh, there's just turtles. Okay, like the enemy wasn't even terrified of the raging <laughs> turtles. Like, <laughs> listen, man. I mean, honestly, they probably didn't even know what to make of it. I'm. Sh- they got. Swords, I know for a while they swords. thought it was like armor. Then they kind of realized it wasn't, and it was like. I don't know. It took me until the last time that we had recorded to understand that there was a Batman Ninja Turtles crossover, which, Chris, to your point, that fight did not disappoint when Batman sent Shredder's <laughs> head into the fucking console. Yeah, Batman kicked his ass. Eric, have you seen this before? I'm aware of it, but I have not seen it. Oh, my goodness. Oh. There's, we, we did a short clip on it in one of our last videos. Uh, Batman and Shredder went at it, and Batman just rocked the fucking shit out of Shredder. And there was one where he kind of like took his hand and put Shredder's head into a console, and Shredder's like a little dizzy for a second, and then all of a Kicked sudden... Kicked him in the fucking head, didn't he? Took his oh. knee straight to Shredder's head, and he just goes, boof! And I was like... See, that's where <laughs> Batman just mean mugs the turtles. Like, that's how you do it. <laughs> like, cut the shit. This it, is a street fight, motherfucker! <laughs> it's taken me 15 seasons to fight him, and you did it in five fucking minutes! Well, that's also kind of like, I don't know, the, the wild thing about, like, fights in general, and, like, D&D weirdly has made me aware of this, is that... Fights are usually very short things. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of weird to think that there's, if like... If you're going off of anime, it's forever. <laughs> if you're going like, off normal, it, it's, like, 30 seconds. Right. Most fights don't last more than 30 seconds or, like, a minute and a half. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, there was a lot of buildup and planning and tension, and now there was this giant clusterfuck fight that was over in two minutes, and now then the world's different. you see a bar different. fight, and it's, like, 
30 seconds and one guy just pushes till someone swings. You know what always threw me off? And I, I don't remember exactly what it did that brought it to my attention, but scales of battles are al- always wild me out now. Cause you see productions like Lord of the Rings and whatnot. And you see these huge fucking things in these armies of tens and thousands, you know, whatever the case is. And then when you look at a map and you realize like this whole like battle that decided the fate of humanity took place in something about the size of a football field. That's yep. it. Yeah. A mile over. Everyone's just like, man, I wonder what those guys I are doing. I was reading a lot this of noise one over there. about it. It was like, well, in, in the an- even in the ancient world, if you were like two, three miles away, you probably didn't even know the fucking battle was happening. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <That's, laughs> there weren't explosions. Yeah. So it was just as was far as of... yelling could get. Yeah. Like, yeah. But no, I think one of the things too, a lot of people forget is like, like, I remember I was reading this story about, like, two feuding dynasty guys from Japan or something like that. And they both sent, like, sixty and 70,000 troops to fight in this valley. And there was so much death and destruction that the river ran red for two days. Oh, shit. And it was just like, you hear about that crap, and you're like, well, you gotta figure 100,000 people dead in a field. It's gallon. A fair amount of blood. How gallon many gallons? Blood each. Yeah. I think, he, I think a person has about... Maybe a little bit less than a gallon in them at any given time. Oh, we have more than that. I, we have way more than that. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. A couple gallons? It's but, not a lot. It's. But, I mean, here's the thing. It's like when you think about it, it's not like we have. It's not like our stomach where I've just got like a floating gallon. I mean, it's it's worked in yeah, to it, everything. Right. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Fuck it. Spencer, you're always on your damn cell phone while we're recording. Fucking Google it real quick. Got this. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> we're, we're mostly like meat and guts and stuff like that. I no, think it's like raw blood. We've, we've got a lot, lot of fucking blood in us. Anyway, moving on to my next bullet point. This one's a bigger um, topic as of recently, and I think maybe the source of a decent amount of controversy um fantastic four the cast has been officially released have you guys heard about this yet i have yes. not okay eric you've heard about this i saw the pictures of the people but i can't pretend i'm super excited about another fantastic four but that's fair we'll, that's we'll fair see. so we'll see. we have um and i don't know uh, other films that a lot of these guys have been in so bear with me here but the thing is going to be cast by mr eben moss I just killed his name. His picture is floating around here somewhere. Um, Joseph Quinn is going to be Johnny Storm. Apparently, he's from Stranger Things. Never watched the series. Don't kill me in the comments. Sorry, guys. Um, Vanessa Kirby is going to be Sue Storm. Um, Last time we saw her would have been uh, Hobbs and Shaw, I think. Um, And then the one that everyone has been really curious about is Mr. Fantastic, Pedro Pascal. So it's not John Krasinski. It's not Killian Murphy. It, It... Signed up, ready to go. Confirmed. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal is going to be our new Reed Richards. I'm okay with that. I can see it. I'm okay He's with it. He's got the range. He's so got the he... range. Yeah. What I'm interested in is then now the villains have also been confirmed. Who's Doom? We don't We don't have actors yet. We have which villains are going to be in the film. Doom? We're getting Doom. Good. We're nice. also getting Silver Surfer. We're also nice. getting Galactus. Get the fuck out of here. If they bring me another motherfucking angry cloud <laughs> coming to slurp up all life on her, I swear to God. Yep. Did no. You, did you th- not like Ryan Reynolds' this, Green Lantern? This is the chance for the studio to correct Galactus. To your point, Chris, he's not an angry cloud. This is their chance to correct Galactus. Maybe show a little bit of power range on Silver Surfer because I don't think we really got that last time, dude. Silver Surfer is a powerhouse. Silver Surfer is a problem. Yeah, like, and it's also a chance to your point in other episodes for Doom to be introduced properly. Yeah, Doom's a motherfucker. Doom is a motherfucker. I'm not gonna. We're not going into it because we have explained in length in other episodes recently how they always like downplay him. Why? Yeah, why powers. Doom is a fucking yeah. problem. So we know that that's gonna be a thing. Um, supposedly in where I'm kind of interested, because as everyone's well aware, Marvel's kind of been in a shit show situation since they've gone down this multiverse path. Supposedly, in addition to whatever the fuck Deadpool's about to do, I think they're aiming to use Reed Richards, Pedro Pascal as kind of the new Tony Stark. And being that centerpiece for technology upgrades that the would be He's leader. the next smart guy. He's going to be our next smart guy. Thoughts, opinions, takes. I kind of like it. I uh, are they going to incorporate 
this phase of the Marvel Universe with the other members of the Marvel Universe? I don't know. Are we going to see the Fantastic Four interacting with the Avengers? Because that's the other thing, too. Because, like, the, the, the Fantastic Four have their own, like, sets of, like, villains and problems they deal with. <clears throat> For sure, like any hero or hero group does. But, like, if they're trying to do this thing, like you said, where he's going to be, like, the new smart guy, like Tony or whatever, then they also have to loop him into some of the other, like, Avengers stuff and whatnot. If I just think that the Avengers are going to get, like, I don't know, I feel like they're kind of moving away from them as much as possible now. So I feel like this Fantastic Four might be the new Avengers. Mm -hmm. Marvel needs to get its shit together as far as actually having a coherent something. What's, What's Marvel about right now? I mean, if you're talking about what's Marvel about money years ago, well, yeah, of course, but <laughs> story wise, I mean, it was always, what's the, the Thanos plot it's building yep. towards something. What's Marvel actually building towards right now? Kang? No, <laughs> that, no. And that's fair. There's so many dangling plot threads that it doesn't. Well, okay. There's Loki's there's doing no its thing. There's no overhanging plot. What the fuck ever happened with Moon Knight? Now they're going to do Daredevil. Now they're going to do Fantastic Four. Is there any coherent story that they're trying to move forward? There's just so many dangling plot threads that we don't know what the fuck is going on anymore. And if they're going to start adding more stuff, I think it's time to actually focus on what they already have and try to make it some kind of coherent pull, story. Pull the threads. Yeah, start connecting shit. There's so many dangling plot points out there that it's... They better start wrapping shit up pretty quick, or at least starting to connect things. Otherwise, it's going to be like how the TV show Lost ended. They kind uh, of lost, lost, <laughs> lost <it>. me <laughs> when they just had so much going on, and they only oh shit, it's our last season. How do we end this? Marvel needs to kind of start thinking about that. Okay, how do we actually start putting these things together? Otherwise, it's just going to fizzle out into into nothingness. Well, and that's the other... one big fart. <laughs> yeah, that's the big problem is is that they're running the risk of losing the thing that made Marvel Marvel, which was having all those coherent threads tied together into a tapestry. And now what's going to end up happening if, like you said, they don't get their shit together, they're going to end up just being Marvel Studios. That's it. It's just going to be you're going to have movies made by Marvel. You're not going to have that connected, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be like... Well, like how Blade is technically in the Marvel Universe, but it's like, you know, you're going to have all these weird independent things happening, and... I really wanted to see Blade fuck up Morbius. Honestly, and then Morbius <laughs> took a shit. That kind of would... I, I, I'd watch that fight. I would watch that, yeah. Sure. No, and I think, uh, Eric, to your point, I think you're absolutely correct. They've got to figure something out. They need to stop with so many... God knows what's going on over here and kind of kind of focus that energy a little bit. I don't have a problem with the crossovers, but the crossovers need to make sense. Dude, they're just throwing shit against a wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah. That's literally what they're doing right now. Well, like, Hawkeye ended with um that was a good spoilers, series. I guess, but Hawkeye got sh- or uh, uh what the fuck is his name? Vincent D'Onofrio. I'm Kingpin. Oh, thank you. I- he got shot in the face. Yep. It was like, okay, how many years do I have to wait until we find out what happened? Oh, he's just fine, I guess. If you watch Echo, he got shot in the face, but he lived because he's... Hawkeye. You know, whatever. <laughs> no, Kingpin got shot in the face. Oh. Kingpin got shot in the face, and he didn't find out what happened with that until Echo. But it was just like, oh, it's fine, whatever. So there's like nothing gets resolved. It's just they keep adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff and adding stuff. Instead of a tapestry, to use the word you used, they just have a big fucking pile of yarn. Yep. yep. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with that. That's well well put, gentlemen. Well, I think that's the other thing, too, though. Is like, but, like, back to your earlier point, though, with Thanos. Like, Fan O. Thanos Quark. was really enjoying Dark Seed. God, you're such a little. <laughs> anyway, like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we finally, after three fucking seasons, found over. Oh, two seasons that I haven't been using the bleep. I finally found something I have to fucking bleep now. And wow. I used it on Chris. <laughs> well spent. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, worth it. But yeah, no, anyway, Spencer, Spencer, don't don't do what. Uh, don't. So Thanos really enjoyed. <laughs> he was the overlaying bad guy, though. Like it's like any D and D plot. Like, like there's a bunch of little guys that you come across, and then a bunch of stories came together. But there's always one overhanging bad guy that draws it all together, and this is lacking that. There isn't. Who's the big bad now? Who's want- pulling strings? Like yeah, like is there a big bad? Is there anything at all that? Hope as of right now, no. From right. from from the indications that we've had and from previous episodes that we've gone through, Doom is supposed to become that problem. 
Is he going to be the overlaid, and that's what this is trying to turn into? I think so, because they have to get away from Kang because of everything that happened with that actor. Real world stuff. And, yeah, because of real world stuff. Kang is out, yeah. right? And again, we talked about this in a previous episode. Doom makes the most sense. Doom has the tools and the power scale to do it. Now the studio just has to actually execute on it. You know what would be really cool, though? He's the is dictator like... of his own goddamn country. Like, right. He makes a... He makes a good grounded threat, and we've talked about this before when it's like, when we talked about, like, um, God, what was it? It was like Captain America versus, like, space aliens. It's like you're in the wrong arena, bro. Like, Victor Von Doom makes a good, like, continent-level kind of bad guy. Like, something that's still terrestrial, it's big, you can get some of the, you know, more normal Avengers in on that, like, kind of scale. But that's just it, right? So maybe, maybe, maybe they've learned their lesson. That's what I'm hoping. And, and they're pulling back from dimensions and extraterrestrial. And, like, galaxy-spanning wars right. to, like, more like a, a ground kind of level. Bring it back to Earth. Yeah, a Absolutely. little bit above street level, but still a serious problem that needs everyone's I attention. I do kind of like that because they mix in Galactus, though. That does give you the overhanging large, like... Implications. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I love the Netflix Marvel stuff so much. The Daredevil, the Jessica Jones. Luke yeah. Cage. Maybe to a lesser extent. Uh, Iron Fist, but uh, Dare, Daredevil. I started was, watching that and I did not. Daredevil was fantastic. Yeah. Daredevil favorite. was good. I like Dare, Luke Cage. Daredevil is probably great. one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Yeah. Which is fantastic. And if you they if they can do an okay ish job bringing Daredevil back, I don't care if it's as good as it was on Netflix. But if they give me a Daredevil that's at least kind of like the one from the Netflix show that's actually watchable, where you have the ground level stuff. I'm going to be really happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that that's the thing is like, you know, hero scaling is important. Like, and it's, now if he's fighting demons and aliens and traveling through different dimensions sense. with Dr. Strange, I'm going to be a little annoyed. Yep. Yeah. It's like, no, Daredevil is similar to Batman. It's Batman. We had this conversation with, it's mm. like Batman, as much as I love Batman, Batman should not be anywhere on the same hemisphere as a fight with something he's like dark side boy. Right. No, but that's just like a, he's, Batman, a, he's a guy. <laughs> Batman stays in Gotham. Yeah. Daredevil stays in fucking Queens. Right. Like, Hell's the, Kitchen. The Hell's Kitchen. Sorry. My bad. Thank You're, you. You're fucked up in the comments. Up the fucked up in the comments. Just fucking pissed off. Well, and we all know that our fucking viewers love keeping us honest in the comments. That yeah. last time we had superhero tangents, we got lit up and episode like we already said we're sorry. God damn it, people. You yeah. can't be wrong on the internet. The Dude, internet will let you know. You can't they be wrong about superheroes down. on the internet. I mean, damn. Anyway, I got to cut you guys off real quick. We are at time for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. We have more super, superhero stuff coming in the next episode. Um, so make sure that you tune in for that next week. Thank you so much to Dubby Energy for partnering with us, powering, energizing this podcast. And until next time, guys, peace. Out. Nanu, nanu. <laughs>